One of the goals here with this forest management project at the Catamount Community Forest is to restore what are called old growth characteristics. So in order to understand the condition of our forest today, you have to know that they're extremely altered. Like most of the forests in the Northeast, almost all of Vermont forests were cleared, most of them pastured within the last 200 years, and the vast majority of them are 60 to 100 years old. Having regrown from these pastures relatively recently, our forests lack many of the attributes that are developed over a huge amount of time in, say, an old growth forest. It's easy to get caught up in mythologizing old growth forests, especially considering there are so few of them on our landscape, but it's important to remember that old growth forests are not valuable just because they're old. From an ecological perspective, they're valuable because of the attributes that they have. Dead wood, big trees, gappy irregular canopy, structural diversity, and deep well-developed soil. All of the stages of forest development are normal and natural and would have been here prior to European colonization in this large-scale land clearing. Forests with these general attributes would have been the most common on Vermont's landscape. So we can think of them not just as old growth attributes as if we're just trying to create something from the past, but we can think of them as the conditions to which our native species have evolved for thousands of years. By using forest management as a tool, by cutting trees, rather than waiting another 200 years for these conditions to develop, because we think that some of them, including the dead wood characteristics of old forest, may take about 300 years to develop, we can instead develop them actively in decades. As a result of this, I see all forest management that I do not as resource extraction, but as restoration. We are restoring these conditions and as such are proactively providing this incredible array of habitats to our native biota at a time when they're really under stress. Now we also need to acknowledge that there are a number of different ways to create these attributes. One way is to simply leave forests unmanaged. This is not appropriate for every forest because some forests are so altered and so stressed that they might actually need our help to do things like control non-native invasive plants or deer overpopulations if they ever will become old growth forests. Another method is to do what I'm doing here at Catamount, which is to use commercial forest management to push forests along these developmental pathways, helping them develop those attributes sooner than they can naturally. By creating these attributes, they will be slightly different than when they create themselves, but they will still be of incredible value to the species that rely on them. Another method we call colloquially set it and forget it. So this is the idea that we might go into a forest and manage it once. So put a lot of dead wood on the ground, create that structural diversity, leave big legacy trees, and then never manage it again. The idea of this is both recognizing the value of action, that we can go into this forest and we can create these attributes way sooner than they can create themselves, and then also acknowledging that there is value to sometimes letting these attributes develop on their own. Now, because the stand that we're managing at Catamount does have some big trees, this is actually a good candidate for that set it and forget it method. So after this forest management project, what you're gonna see is that this relatively simple forest with a single age class of trees is gonna become much more complex. It'll have pockets of trees that have been cut that'll regenerate into new generations of young trees and also shrubs and flowering plants. It'll have tons and tons of dead wood on the forest floor that would have taken many centuries to develop. And it'll have lots of these big old trees that have been retained forever as what we call legacy trees. We'll have to see what happens. It might be that this forest will require more management down the road, but if we're able to create those attributes and if we get a good response, and if it seems like this forest is on a good trajectory, this might be a great example of that set it and forget it method. What I really like about this idea of set it and forget it is that it acknowledges a couple important things. It acknowledges that old growth forests are not just valuable because they're old, but because of these incredible attributes that they have. It acknowledges that we can have a role in creating these attributes, that through management, we can really have a positive impact on our forests. And it also acknowledges that the idea of managing forests and having some areas as reserves just to be old growth forests and even just to develop on their own, those two ideas are completely complementary and compatible. And that we don't have to be a detractor of forest management to be a supporter of old forests or vice versa.